Hey guys, I'm Heidi Preeb. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. This month on this channel, we are talking about self-esteem. And today in particular, I want to talk about the role that structure and discipline plays when it comes to inner child or reparenting work. Now, if you don't know what the term inner child means, I do have a video linked in the description of this one that goes over what that term means, but essentially I'm gonna encourage us to just think of our inner children as the part of ourselves that exists beneath all the layers of social conditioning that just reacts in a very pure, instant, and emotional way to everything that is happening inside of our lives. And essentially the idea is that the more layers of attachment wounding or trauma or whatever it is, we have on top of those basic authentic emotional reactions, the less in touch with our inner children we're going to be. Now, when I see people approaching inner child work, whether this is workshops to talk about reparenting or blogs, whatever the resource is, what I see getting really heavily focused on is the role of getting in touch with joy, spontaneity, and playfulness. And while all of those qualities are absolutely wonderful qualities to access inside of ourselves, I think that we aren't always going about it in the most direct way. When you look at children, and when you look at which children are the happiest and the least distressed, it's often the children whose parents are holding a healthy amount of structure for them. So parents who know their child well enough to understand what kind of structure and discipline that child needs in order to feel as though they can kind of let go a little bit and just enjoy their lives and be creative and grow and learn things. And the children who you see struggling the most are often children whose needs are being the most neglected. So children whose needs for safety, security, and structure are not being met in their home environment. Or children whose needs for structure and security are being met in a way that does not take into account what their actual needs are. So this might be the case when children come from a more authoritarian household, where the rules of the house are not actually structured around the child's flourishing, they're structured around the parent's feelings, which might be very stifling for the child's emotional expression. So children who come from more authoritarian households tend to grow into adults that look at structure as a dirty word, because the structure that was imposed upon them when they were children may have felt meaningless like it did not actually help them to relax and enjoy their lives and learn and grow, which is what it's a child's job to do. It actually kept them very oppressed and it made them have to chronically monitor their behavior to make sure they weren't making a mistake. So in this sense, children from homes like that were not actually given adequate structure because they were not given the structure that was needed for their own growth and development. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Children, including the inner children that live inside of all of us, need meaningful discipline and structure in order to let go and relax into their lives and be creative. And so if we want to allow our inner children to access that energy consistently, we have to get to know those kids, figure out what their needs are, and then start showing up for ourselves in a way that provides containment for those children, and they will naturally come out and do the rest of the work. So the way I look at reparenting is not through the lens of how do I very consciously and deliberately engage in more play? It's how do I create the conditions for myself where I feel naturally safe to be playful and creative in my everyday life? How do I make sure that I am meeting enough of my own needs and that I trust myself enough to continue meeting those needs, to allow myself to relax into the experience of living and take the highs and lows of life as they naturally come. So we're gonna go over a list of questions you can ask yourself to start getting an idea of where you may or may not be giving your own inner child the structure that they need to thrive. And I just wanna reiterate one more time, all children naturally rebel against structure that they find to be meaningless. Whether that rebellion means acting out or shutting down internally. But when children understand in their bodies, when they have a felt sense that the limits being placed on me are keeping me safe, they flourish. They might throw temper tantrums along the way, but ultimately they experience a deep sense of safety that allows them to take many more risks in the world. So what we're gonna talk about as this video goes on is how to cultivate that sense of safety for your inner child as an adult 
so that you can get more comfortable feeling secure enough to take more risks in your life. So here are five questions you can ask yourself to figure out where your relationship with your inner child is currently at. Question one, on a daily basis, how anxious and overwhelmed do you feel versus how energized and creative do you feel? When we are not tending to our own practical and emotional needs in a consistent way, our inner children become overwhelmed with anxiety because they know I don't have a parent looking out for me. So if we are neglecting any major area of what keeps us safe and healthy in the world, our inner children are going to become overwhelmed with anxiety. Versus, if they know that we are able to take care of ourselves and that we are going to do so even when it's not particularly fun, our inner children can relax. And the mental real estate that normally gets dedicated to them panicking and ruminating over how they're gonna get their needs met can get spent on creative thinking. Think about a four-year-old or a seven-year-old trying to figure out how they're gonna pay rent, stay healthy, get a job. These are not the jobs that should be going to our inner children. But when we neglect the adult part of ourselves, the part of our mind that knows how to take care of us, we start trying to solve those problems from an emotional place. And from an emotional place, those problems feel like anxiety and distress. So what we want to do here, and we're going to talk more about this after we go through the rest of the questions, is figure out how we can keep certain systems running in the background of our lives that are getting our needs met and get clear with ourselves on how much time and energy am I going to devote to those systems every single day in order to free up my mind for the rest of the time that I'm awake to think about other things that are not stress-inducing. So there's this quote about doing hard exercise that I cannot find the attribution for right now, but I remember going something along the lines of, I can have one hard hour a day and 23 easy hours, or I can have 24 hard hours. And the idea here is that getting the hard things done in life and attending to our practical needs doesn't always feel great while we're doing it, but it allows us the mental ease to enjoy the rest of our lives without having to fixate and ruminate on how we're going to get our needs met. Second question to ask yourself to start examining your relationship with your inner child. How grounded do I feel when making decisions? So when we know our inner children well, when we've actually taken the time to get to know who we authentically are under those layers of conditioning and what is really important to us in life, a natural set of priorities comes to the surface of our awareness. And having a natural set of priorities that are authentic to us allows making decisions to come fairly easily. It doesn't mean we're gonna love every decision, it doesn't mean we're always gonna choose perfectly or that every decision is gonna feel effortless, but when we are not in touch with our inner children, when we are basing most of our decisions around how we want to be perceived by other people or around what we think we should do with our lives, often what happens is we feel really stressed anytime we have to make a decision, large or small, because in some way we are at war with ourselves. And the way to end that war with the self is to spend a lot of time actually getting to know your inner child so that they trust you to make wise decisions. Remember, this is the difference between the child who is thriving because their parents are able to set rules and limitations that allow them to feel safe versus the children who are crippled under the pressure of adhering to rules that don't make any sense for them and that are actually there to serve their parent. When we make decisions based on what we think the rest of the world wants from us or based on how we want to be perceived, we are being abusive authoritarian parents to our own inner children. And when we make decisions based on what our inner child wants in a given moment and nothing else, we are being neglectful parents who are not giving our children an adequate amount of structure and discipline. To be a healthy and secure parent means to deeply understand both the wants and the needs of our children and create enough structure through the decisions that we make on a daily basis for ourselves to allow our inner children to thrive and get some of what they want, but most of what they need. So if decisions are something you really struggle with, ask yourself, am I more of an authoritarian parent or a neglectful one? Or do I flip-flop between the two? 
Do I go authoritarian and try to adhere to all of these rules and things I think I should do? and then ricochet back over to the other side and for a while give myself everything I want as soon as I want it. And in both cases, what's often being missed out on is who you authentically are, what your actual needs are in life and your actual desires. And you can start building a life around those things instead of ricocheting back and forth between those two extremes. But we're gonna talk about that a little bit more after the next questions. Third question you might want to ask yourself to start getting an idea of how that relationship with your inner child is going. On average, how much resentment do you feel towards the other people in your life versus how much do you feel as though you are present and accepting of the people in your life? When we are not showing up as responsible parents for our inner children, what our inner children start naturally doing is looking around to see, hey, who in my life looks like a responsible adult who might be able to meet my needs? And then we start getting attached to other people, expecting them to do the parenting of our inner children for us. The problem is that this is nobody else's job. So by and large, people are not going to be willing to take on that job for us. And we're going to start resenting them for not providing us with the structure and discipline we're craving. The reason we're going to go to resentment rather than anger is because anger is an emotion that leads to setting boundaries. And if we set boundaries now, we've just put up a fence between ourselves and the other person, and how are they gonna meet our needs from the other side of that fence? So we keep them close, but we experience chronic resentment towards them. Resentment is usually a sign of enmeshment. We feel like we can't say what we want to say or we can't ask for what we want to ask for, either because we're terrified of boundaries or because we are dependent upon them for meeting our needs. Usually, it's some degree of both. And often the problem here is that the needs we are looking to other people to fulfill are actually needs we need to be meeting for our inner children. And so experiencing chronic resentment might be a sign that we aren't fully showing up for ourselves and then we're projecting the need to be taken care of onto other people and expecting them to do it for us. Fourth question you might wanna ask yourself to figure out where your relationship with your inner child is at is how patient versus how panicked am I about getting my needs met? So something I see quite a bit on the internet when I go perusing through different forums and Facebook groups that talk about attachment healing in particular is this kind of guttural panic around having unmet needs. And I think that once again, when our inner children are running the show and they know that they have neglectful parents, anytime a need comes up, they're gonna panic. Versus if you have a child with healthy and secure parents, they can have the odd need come up and they understand that for most people, Life is kind of a constant fluctuation of meeting different needs at different times. So maybe for a while, you really need to focus on your career at the expense of your social well-being. But if you have a healthy inner parent who you know sees you and understands you and knows what your overall needs are, it feels a lot more comfortable to put certain needs on the back burner for a period of time in order to meet more pressing ones because you know that your healthy parent is keeping track of which needs are going unmet and that they're gonna make sure those things get taken care of in the future. So when we trust ourselves to both understand our own needs as well as find roots for getting them met, it's not a panic-inducing sensation to, for a period of time, have a need go unmet. But again, if our inner children are running the show and they don't trust our inner parent to meet their needs, they're going to start desperately grasping at whatever they can find to get their needs or wants, which they often can't distinguish between, satisfied. So again, we're gonna talk more about the antidote to this, but we just wanna get an awareness to start of which of these things we might be struggling more or less with. And the fifth and last question I recommend asking yourself is the question, how much does shame and embarrassment hold me back from pursuing the things that I want out of my life? And this is a really subtle but important question to ask yourself, because what it gets at is, where does your inner child have genuine skill deficits that they need your help developing around? Often when our children feel a lot of shame or embarrassment, so they're having thoughts like, oh, I really wanna start dating, but I don't really know how to relate to other people in a way that feels natural to me. I only really know how to date from a social mask. 
or maybe your inner child really wants to do more body-based stuff, more movement, more sport, more activity, but they feel really awkward and uncomfortable in their body. Or maybe in general, you just wanna feel more competent and capable of going after what you want in life, but your inner child has this fear that you're not smart enough to figure any of that out on your own. And these are areas where if we just tell our children, you're fine, you're totally skilled in those areas, just go for it, we're actually just kind of gaslighting ourselves because we often do have very real skill deficits that what we actually need to do in order to feel confident is to take the time to patiently and compassionately develop grace in the areas where we currently feel awkward. Sometimes it works to fake it till you make it, but other times it really doesn't. Other times we really do have to sit down with ourselves and figure out in a step-by-step -step way, how am I going to develop this skill that I currently don't have, but that feels important to me? Just sending our inner child out into the world to blindly fail at things without any sense of structure is not very good parenting. If the child inside of us really feels awkward around other people, Maybe it's worth investing some time and resource into slowly learning social skills. Maybe if our inner child feels really embarrassed about their appearance, it's worth looking at, am I actually taking care of my hygiene needs, my health needs? Do I know what clothes look good on me and what I feel really confident wearing? This is the process of respecting the dignity of our inner children, ergo the dignity of ourselves getting angry at ourselves for lacking skills that we were never adequately taught or that at the time we were taught them, we were too traumatized or too dissociated to really take them on does not get us anywhere. Healthy reparenting work means being willing to go back over some of the lessons that we kind of missed the first time around and figuring out how we can cater those lessons to the people we now know ourselves to be and to the more vulnerable and cautious parts of ourselves that might need a little bit of extra structure around those areas. Maybe my inner child has this desire to go out dancing, but they feel really awkward in their body, so they only wanna go out dancing when they're really drunk. And maybe a loving thing for my inner parent to do is rather than force that child to put down the alcohol if that's starting to feel like a problem and just go do the thing that feels super uncomfortable, Maybe it's about investing in a program or an instructor who can actually teach my inner child to feel comfortable and attuned to the music so that eventually through practice and skill building, they can do this thing that they want to do without feeling embarrassed or needing to dissociate while doing it. So this is embodiment work that happens from the ground up. And what I wanna go over now really quickly is just some of the antidotes or ways you might wanna start working on any of the things we just talked about if your answer to any of those five questions was not the answer that you would have hoped. So if you find that your inner child is chronically anxious and they don't have a lot of mental space to relax and be playful, creative, and spontaneous in your life, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you're spending some time figuring out what are your inner child's biggest stressors? Which areas of your life on a practical level are you consistently not attending to in a way that your inner child is taking the stress and anxiety on about? So are you taking care of your own security needs, your own health needs, your own hygiene needs, your own mental health needs? And which things can you start putting into your life that you trust yourself to be consistent enough with in order for your inner child to relax a bit. So often what this looks like is taking a step back from both that authoritarian inner parent and that neglectful inner parent and finding the realistic compromise. So instead of going, I need to triple my income this year and then getting really stressed out and falling back and burning out for six months and then starting to feel stress over your security needs, can you figure out a bare minimum amount of work that you need to do every month or a bare minimum budget you need to stick to to give yourself just enough freedom to not panic all of the time. So this is about dropping the idealism and telling yourself, I have to make sure that no matter what, even on the worst months, when I'm feeling the most burnt out and unmotivated, here is the bare minimum I will commit to doing. And it has to be something you actually trust yourself to do. Here is the bare minimum of how I will care for my health even when I'm feeling exhausted. Here's the bare minimum amount of socializing I will do to make sure that I don't become completely isolated and withdrawn. 
Here is the bare minimum amount of work I will do in order to make sure that I can keep paying my bills without extreme overwhelm. Setting out these bare minimum rules for yourself that you and your inner child agree upon allows your inner child to relax, especially after they have seen you employ these bare minimum rules during periods where otherwise you may have let responsibility slide. This can help you build back a sense of trust with your inner child because they're gonna start to see you behave in a practical and realistic way, but also in a way that is not writing off their needs. The next thing we wanna make sure we're devoting some serious time to is getting to know our inner children. So getting to know who we authentically are beneath all of those layers of social conditioning. What do we actually love and want to do with our lives? Versus what are we doing because we feel like we should do it? Those are the forms of discipline that once again, our inner child is going to naturally rebel against. So if we wanna tackle that second issue of struggling to make decisions, we need to make sure that we are investing enough into our relationship with our inner child that we're understanding why we're giving them rules in the first place. If we are working jobs that we do not actually enjoy working, but that we think it's good for our social status for us to work, our inner children are going to start feeling either depressed or anxious, or they're gonna start dragging their heels every day when we go into work, versus if we're choosing the work that we do from a place of genuine love, so we're doing something that most of the time our inner child actually really enjoys and feels curious about. They're going to be willing to rise to the occasion for us more often. So the ways we can tell that we're making decisions from that inner child is that often our bodies feel energized and excited and like they want to move towards the decisions we're making versus decisions that we make from a place of feeling like they're what we should do tend to feel really constricting. They tend to make us feel lethargic or anxious in our energy, and it might start feeling really hard to motivate ourselves, even though, in theory, we're picking what we think we want. So the body does not lie here. One of the most valuable things you might ever be able to do for yourself is get in touch with what feels like a yes in your body versus what feels like a no in your body. And this is something that you're going to have to hark back to time and time again over the entire course of your life. I still frequently have experiences where I make a decision that I think I authentically want, but my body starts reacting with no energy. I start feeling lethargic or anxious and I have to end up getting honest with myself and going, you know what? I think my ego really wants that decision. It really wants to work that job or date that person or whatever it is, but my authentic self, the part of me that actually wants what it wants, no matter what anyone else has to say about it, does not want that thing. And then when I let that thing go, it's like all of my energy and creativity and vitality comes rushing back to me. That's how we know that we are making a decision from an embodied place, from the energy of authentic yes, rather than this kind of stuck cognitive energy of what we think we should be doing. The next thing we want to look at if we struggle with trying to get our needs met through other people is building self-trust. So I do have a video on self-abandonment, so what happens when we outsource our needs to other people, and then another video on rebuilding self-trust after a lifetime of self-abandonment, both of which I will link in the description of this one, and I highly recommend either checking those out next or pausing this video and watching them now if this is something that you really identify yourself struggling with. But in general, what we wanna be clear on here is that we don't ever want to be interpersonally getting our needs met at the expense of our self-respect and integrity. Anytime we do that trade-off, we do something we're uncomfortable with so that someone else will take care of us in some way that we are neglecting to take care of ourselves, we lose a little bit more of our self-respect and our self-trust. And those are two things that are crucial for building a strong relationship between our inner parent and our inner child. So we wanna really spend some time on this one and do some repair work if we find that this is an area we're really struggling with. When you can look at yourself in the mirror, the way you would look at a partner who you believe to be totally competent and go, I trust you completely, I believe you are capable of meeting my needs, and I believe that you will, the relationship that you have with yourself goes to a totally new level. 
I believe that's one of the deepest forms of self-love we can have, is self-trust. The belief that we will stay on the page with ourselves and show up to meet our own needs, even during the periods where it feels the hardest to do that. Which leads us into that fourth point, how calm versus how patient are you in meeting your own needs? When we have a clear idea of what our values are, so when we've really taken the time to not only get to know ourselves, but also observe ourselves moving through life, and notice the times when, for example, we picked something that we thought we wanted and then realized we didn't want that, we were mistaken, if we can make sure that we're tracking that through doing frequent reflection on the choices that we've made, what's gonna happen is we develop better and better discernment. So we start to understand what's most important to us in life, not through virtue of what we're cognitively imagining to be most important to us, but by actually looking at the past and recognizing which situations most naturally brought out my aliveness and my creativity versus which situations did I find draining and deadening. We gather really useful information on making better future decisions. So this is something we can do ongoing reflection about, but it's also something we can devote very intentional time to. So a practice I used at one point that I found very helpful was just sitting down and writing out periods of my life where I felt the most energized, on the same page with myself, like I wasn't experiencing intense inner conflict, and then looking at what the common threads were between those experiences, even if they were only a couple of days long at a time, even if they were only an hour long at a time, Just starting to trace through our history and starting to find patterns around what energizes versus depletes us can be a really great place to start when it comes to getting to know our inner children and what values they hold. And when we have a life that is structured around our genuine values and priorities, once again, we're not gonna panic as much if we have a certain need going unmet for a short period of time. We're going to trust ourselves to stay true to our values and attend to that need later on when it's appropriate for us to do so. So in the interim, we can stay relaxed and once again, allow our inner child to keep approaching our lives with that creative spontaneity and joy. And the last thing we want to stay aware of, once again, to help our children build the appropriate skills that they actually want and need in order to navigate the world as the most authentic version of themselves, we have to look at which values does my child hold or which desires do they have that are maybe shame-bound for me. So if, for example, I think it's really shallow to focus on appearance because maybe I internalized at a young age that only vain people care about what they look like, I might have this inner child who's now really sad if I'm not treating myself with dignity when it comes to how I present myself. Or maybe I feel really uncomfortable in social situations because I've internalized that being strong and silent is the right way to be and being upbeat or extroverted is the wrong way to be. But maybe my inner child is really craving deeper connection and they need us to help them learn how to connect with other people in a way that actually feels authentic to them and not like they are just parroting what other people are doing in a way that does not feel authentic to them. So all of this work, all of these questions that we ask ourselves and all of the answers that we start to find for them allow us to gain a deeper sense of who we are and how we ought to be structuring our time and spending our money and making plans for the future based on the people we actually are at our core. So this is not about imposing senseless structure and discipline on ourselves. It's about setting up the conditions for our lives that take the pressure off of us enough that our inner children can actually come out to play. So giving our children enough structure that they trust us and are able to come fully to life through the attuned parenting that we are giving them. All right, that's all I have to say for today on this topic. But as always, let me know in the comments any thoughts, feelings, questions you have coming up as you go through this video. I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and your inner children and each other. And I will see you back here again really soon.